the simple strategy is look at a any vertex and uh, look at the chains which are ending at it right some many chains may be ending at it not just one chain many chains may be ending at it. longest chain ending at it ending at vertex v ask how many vertices are there in this chain and that cardinality that number use it as a color that number use it as a color and uh, give that color to that vertex this is the algorithm which i am proposing and so every vertex will get a color now right but uh, the question is is it a proper coloring or not so you have given a color to this that's not enough right okay if it was just a matter of giving color i could have given some color to every vertex right but you have to make sure that it's a proper vertex coloring so to check whether it's proper vertex coloring or not what should i do i just have to take an edge so uv edge and see whether u and v are getting different colors right but i know the rule by which i assign colors to this so i considered all the chains which are reaching u and uh, the number of vertices in the longest chain was given as a color to you and the number of vertices in the longest chain reaching v was the so let's say l of v e, l of u right was given as a color to this is it possible that l of v e is equal to l of u that's my question because if it is equal then it is not a proper coloring no if it is not equal we are okay what is the argument that it can never be equal so the thing is suppose it is same that's how we should tell suppose it is same then what happens suppose so let's say the look let's say the direction from u to v is like this the, it can be the other way also without loss of generality now you know suppose this is the longest chain which is reaching u l of u is the number of vertices in it now of course this can be attached with it and uh, here l of u has to be at least l of u plus 1 right in fact greater than equal to 1 so how can it be equal so there is uh, a longer chain ending at it right so it never be equal that's a, uh, a tricky one line statement but it works right so that coloring strategy seems to give you a proper vertex coloring and now the number of colors you have used is what maximum number of colors you have used is so some vertex might have got the biggest color no that means the chain is ending at that vertex with those many vertices but then there is a click if there is a chain of that length then that chain will correspond to a click because a chain means the transitive relation makes it a click because it's though we imagine the chain as a path but then you remember there is a transitive relation that means if there is a path there all possible edges are there right because i to j there is somehow i can reach then transitivity makes that i to j edge also right so finally so therefore that's it so this uh, uh, tells us that chi perfection is there all induced subgraph or com comparability graph same arguments works there is the alpha perfection here first we should know what is alpha here alpha means independent set right the biggest cardinality independent set so in the partial order literature uh, interestingly there is another word used for independent set what is the word it's called anti chain somehow maybe this were not developed uh, at the same time maybe different people developed this so they used the word it's not surprising that they used the word anti chain because you can see that chain was a clique right so anti chain was the independent set there right so <coughs> so anti chain means a collection of vertices somewhere in the partial order such that no two of them are comparable it's exactly the independent set there is no need to describe it too much so it's independent set right and uh, so biggest cardinality of an anti chain is what we are concerned about when we are talking about alpha of g and our interest is to prove that alpha of g is equal to clique cover number clique cover number means how many 
cliques are required to cover all the vertices. You remember it's a, it's like the chromatic number, but the on the complement we see that right, the cliques to cover. But uh, we have already seen that these cliques corresponds to what chains, right? Cliques means chains, rhymes, right? Total orders. Chains are total orders, right? <coughs> now, the number of chains so that all the vertices are covered. That means every vertex goes to exactly one one of the chains. The number of total orders so that every vertex of the partial order goes into one of them. The number of total orders required to cover the partial order. Okay. What is that number of chains required to cover the partial order? You can easily see that uh, it has to be at least the anti chain because a chain cannot take two vertices from the anti chain because in a chain any two vertices has to be uh, related with each other, right? Because that is what no? every it is a total order. So, therefore, at least as much as anti chain. Uh, but uh, the famous theorem from Dilworth, have you studied that? Dilworth's theorem is called. It says that the total orders required, the number of total orders required, minimum number of total orders required to cover the partial order is equal to the maximum cardinality of an anti chain, right? So, essentially, that is what we are looking for. Right. You can uh, prove it to yourself, but uh, I will leave it at that because uh, that also the, an older theorem, so will come from there. So, that, that is because probably these things were the fascination when Burge uh, looked at uh, this perfect graphs uh, initially. He saw that many of these uh, theorems, so you, you should recall that it is in uh, 1960s or something like that, right. Uh, so, at that time he might have found all these things very fascinating, right. So, all these theorems are becoming alpha chi perfection or alpha perfection in some subclass of graphs. So, it was definitely worth studying the perfect graph then, right. So, we have uh, covered uh, uh, comparability graph to some extent, I hope you remember what it is at least. So, always associate comparability graphs with partial orders and uh, I just covered alpha perfection and chi perfection there to give uh, some idea and then connect to perfect graph uh, literature. And uh, recall now to know that uh, uh, comparability graphs are perfect, we do not need any of these things because now the strong perfect graph theorem is known, it is proved right. So, uh, what does strong perfect graph theorem says? Uh, it says you just have to look whether there is a whole odd hall or an, an odd anti hall, uh, odd means at least 5, right, odd, 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 odd uh, 3 is not considered uh, among them. So, hall of length uh, 5, 7, 9, etcetera or anti hall of, you can quickly see that halls are not there, right. We have already seen that odd cycles cannot be uh, transitively oriented, right. But anti halls you have to check, uh, that is I will give it to you as an exercise, it is a quick check whether can you transitively orient uh, anti holes. That means the complement of holes, is it possible to get it from a partial order? That means is it possible to orient the edges of it? It will be a contradiction somehow, just uh, check it out, right. So, th that way also we could have come up with the perfection. So, we do not have to go through all this thing now, but then because the strong perfect graph theorem is proved already, right, that that is a very heavy theorem, right. So, so now, well, let me see. I'll, so, th I think uh, because we, we will, uh, it may be a good idea to cover some more classes. Then. Yeah, so uh, I will just mention some other classes also. Another very uh, subclass of uh, comparability graphs, uh, which is familiar, but only a subclass of comparability graphs. So, take an interval graph and take the complement of that. What do you mean by that? In interval graph, if an edge is connect, uh, if there is an edge, then just uh, uh, remove that edge, and if there is no edge, put that edge, right? Complement, right? 
whenever there are two vertices are not connected in the integral graph then put the edge otherwise don't. This is called uh, the co-interval graph, co-interval graph because it is a complement of interval graphs. Any graph G is a co-interval graph if G complement is an interval graph. Can you see that uh, this is a natural comparability graph, very natural com comparability graph. This is the partial orders, a partial order is associated with that, not the such partial orders are called interval orders and all, right. There are a lot of literature in that, so very, uh, very natural simple partial order is associated with that. Can you see that? That is a question. So you have to visualize it, there is no point telling. So the think of an interval graph, an interval representation. And now imagine what would be the complement of that. That means whenever interval graph has an edge, whenever two intervals intersect, right. So in the complement an edge is there, when they do not intersect, right. When they do not intersect, two intervals do not intersect on the real line, what can you see? What order is there between them? There is an order, right. One interval comes before the other interval, that is it, right, is not it? There is a natural order there. For instance, if this is an interval and uh, if another interval is not intersecting with this, it should be either like this after this or it should be before this, right. So, whenever two intervals are not intersecting, one is after or left or right of it, therefore there is a natural order in the in this uh, increasing way. So, there is one, we can say that one is greater than the other, but if it is intersecting it is difficult to tell, right, because you will uh, start telling with respect to uh, the start points uh, and all, but then it is possible that something is inside and uh, all kinds of confusions will be there, but you can try to cook up orders there, but it will be more complicated. But here no complication, it is very simple, right, because they are not intersecting, one should be above or below that, uh, right of it, ex completely right of it or completely before it. So if you take the complement of interval graph, they do give an order uh, whenever uh, there is no edge between uh, two vertices, there is an order. And that means uh, in the comp in the complement when there is an edge uh, you see a direction given and the only thing you have to verify is transitivity is there or not. Naturally it is there right because if A is related to B suppose this is this is A this is B so and then B is related to C that means C is above C so C is after B right this is in the sequential law right one after the other coming. So not this is only a partial order, this is not a total order because uh, still we have those uh, things in the interval graphs where intervals were not intersecting, right. So they do not do not have that order between them, right. So, <coughs> so therefore it is only a partial order, right. So these are interval orders. So therefore, uh, so what we say is that uh, uh, interval graphs, interval graphs are co-comparability graphs. We will say, I mean complements of comparability. Only a sub subclass of co-comparability graphs. Graphs, co-comparability graphs. We will say. Not all co-comparability graphs are interval graphs. Not, but all interval graphs are co-comparability graphs, complements of comparability. So now let me move to uh, another class of graphs called uh, split graphs. So very simple class of graphs is a subclass of codal graphs. subclass of caudal graphs. If it is a subclass of caudal graphs, then uh, it is a perfect graphs anyway, right. So how does a split graph look like? It is split, it can be split into an independent set and a clique, that is the split graph. That means the vertex set can be partitioned into two groups. One will be an independent set, how many is unimportant? 
one will be an independent set, the other will be a clique here that means something like this all edges will be here and there can be any kind of connection between this and this here. This connection is there is no control over that, but there is nothing inside this portion this is a stable set independent set this every edge is there here this is a clique. Okay. So, such kind of graphs are called split graphs and why do I think that uh, split graphs are caudal graphs? Because, because we cannot have any 4 or more cycles there, can you see that quickly? Uh, suppose there is a 4 cycle, what may be 4 or more cycle there? what see the you cannot have a cycle like this no odd cycle will not come like this because uh, if I do like this then it will be even cycle right zigzagging go there come back go there come back then if you want to close it will be an even cycle. But uh, if it is an odd cycle some edge right somewhere we should uh, also maybe something like this we should move like this even this thing. So, this is not also not possible because you know this are there are codes for all those things right because do, do you see that cycles why cycles are not uh, possible. So, because how many in a cycle a vertex can have only left neighbor and right neighbor right other than if, if it does not have code and uh, suppose there is a vertex from the clique side. Right. I told that split graphs have one independent set side and a clique side and suppose I take a vertex from the clique side in the cycle, then I cannot have both its left neighbor and uh, right neighbor here right because, because then this edge will become a chord right. right. So, therefore, one of them will go out. And then this is the only thing which I can have, but then there is no edge here. So, how will I complete it right. So, think about it try to prove that there is no uh, uh, 4 cycle or more here induce 4 cycle or more, but uh, there is much easier way to see that it is caudal graph if you want to use our tools which we develop. For instance, can you quickly see a PEO here <coughs> PEO perfect elimination ordering here. So, the for instance uh, you can do something like v1, v2, v k and then v k plus 1 up to v n. This can be the clique you can enumerate uh, the clique vertices in the later part and the independent set vertices in the first part. Do you see that this is a PEO because anyway when you go from here to here. Uh, because that was a fully full clique from here onwards the neighbors are only in the clique. So, anyway in neighbors will be clique right. So, there are various ways to see that this is a caudal graph and if it is a caudal graph yes it is uh, uh, hmm, uh, let us see I will do as much as possible like uh, see the this is also you can take it uh, halfway and uh, take it as homework later. Uh, this is interesting. The split graphs are interestingly not only caudal graphs, they are also so called co caudal graphs. What do you mean by co caudal graphs? You are, you are seeing this co word uh, many times today. A complement of caudal graphs, very easy to see why. Because if you take a split graph, so this was this was the split graph, right? So, all edges here. Now, take the complement of this graph, how will it look like? It will look like this will become clique right and this will become yeah independent set and uh, yeah these edges may change something else may come yeah something else may come right something else means what was, what was not there in the earlier it will come. So, therefore, the split graphs if you take the complement is again a split graph need neatly the same structure right. So, if the original was a co caudal graph the complement is also a caudal graph. So, it is actually the complement of a caudal graph every the original uh, was a complement of a caudal graph it is caudal graph and complement of a caudal graph right. 
So, in other words a split graph is chordal graph and a, cord, a co chordal graph. Right, because its complement is also caudal, so it can be seen as the complement of a caudal. But that is that itself is not the interesting part. So, the converse is also correct. What is a converse? That means if you are given a graph which claims to be both a caudal and a co caudal graph, then it has to be a split graph. Uh, if both chordal and co chordal then that implies split the the split implies chordal and co chordal was straightforward which you quickly could see but this is more uh, involved uh, how do you see that if a graph is chordal any graph which is chordal and its complement is also chordal then it has to be a split graph right so the uh, the the point here to note uh, is that suppose a graph is caudal and co caudal certain uh, subgraphs are missing so certain induced subgraphs are missing from that graph if g claims to be caudal and co caudal then certain subgraphs certain induced subgraphs are missing here which are the things subgraphs missing for instance this is missing right c4 because it's a caudal graph c4 cannot be there induced c4 can cannot be there and uh, c5 is missing C5 is also because it is a caudal graph C4, C5, C6 nothing will be there, but I will say C4 and C5 are missing. And then moreover because it is a co caudal graph that means its complement is a caudal graph this stuff is missing. This is so called 2 K2 it is a K2 here it is a K2, K2 means a complete graph on two vertices that means an edge 2 K2 means two edges, but uh, just two edges is not enough the, this this should not be there ok 2 k 2 induce 2 k 2 right. If you take that uh, induce subgraph on those four vertices you should just see two edges right nothing else should be there that means these four edges should be missing that is 2 k 2. Because in our graph g this 2 k 2 will not be there why because if you go to the complement if this was there if you go to the complement you would have seen this right this is a C4 and uh, but you are saying that its complement is caudal because this is a co caudal graph. So, uh, 2K2 also should be missing. So, we have 2K2 is absent and C4 is absent, C5 is absent though many other things are also absent actually this captures most of it because uh, it is from this thing it is obvious that uh, C6 cannot be there. Why? Because if there was a C6, suppose if there was a C6, can you see that uh, we already told it why? This is C6 right? Sorry C7. Yeah, if this is C6, now let me highlight it. See look at this edge and this edge. What can I tell about it? This is an induced C6, so therefore these edges, these edges are anyway not present, right? So therefore, 2K2 also comes along with it. But we already told that 2K2 is missing, so we don't have to tell that C6 is missing. And similarly for higher cycles, and uh, so therefore whatever we told is kind of enough, right? The complement also we can talk about it, right? So bigger the thing, this 2K2 will take care of it. So essentially, when you say caudal and co-caudal, that is that are the those are the those three are the things which are important: C4, 
2K to C5. C5 is very special because C5 cannot be captured by the 2K2 because if you can just carefully look at it, uh, see look, this is not enough here, no? 2K2 will not be coming from this. See if I take one, if I take one edge here, no other edge is there. So, suppose if the farthest edge may be this one if I try, see this connection is there between them, see this connection is there between them or if I try to take, uh, if I try to take this one, but this connection is there, right. So, it is uh, you cannot get induced 2 K 2 from this C 5, C 6 onwards you can get, am I right? So, therefore, that is why C 5 is specially mentioned, C, uh, C 4, C 5 and 2 K 2, ok. So, when I say that a graph G is caudal and co caudal, that means its complement is also caudal, then we are sure that it does not have a C 4, C 5 and 2 K 2 as in none of these things as induced subgraphs induced is important word. You just let me know when I have to stop, ok. I will stop wherever it is to be because I can, uh, it is time. Uh. So, then uh, of course, uh, this from this thing you have to prove that somehow I can you can take it as an exercise uh, that uh, look uh, if these things are not there, then it has to be a split graph, right. 